What's up guys, I'm Tano Brock and welcome to the first of my home studio tutorials. Today we're going to talk about how to set up a live stream from your home with high quality audio using any DAW. So stick around and we'll get right to it. All right guys, welcome back. So, over the past few weeks, like most musicians out there, I've been doing a lot of live streaming on social media. And I've received a lot of questions about my setup and how I've been able to stream with such high quality audio. So I thought I'd make this video explaining to you guys how to do that. So off the bat, you'll need a few things. You'll need an audio interface. I have the Universal Audio Apollo, which is great and makes this even better. So I'll show a little trick for Universal Audio users um, that can help make this even smoother. But any audio interface will do for now. Um, you'll also need a DAW. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it in Logic and Ableton today. Um, you'll also need OBS, which is a free software you can download from the internet that allows you to connect the stream to Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, lots of different streaming platforms. Um, and you'll also need Soundflower, which is also something that you can uh, download from the internet for free. I'll post those links in the description and um, more about that later. So um, yeah, let's jump right in here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go to Audio MIDI Setup. This is a utility application that comes with your Mac that allows you to configure audio devices. And we're going to create a new aggregate device and we're going to choose Soundflower and our interface, which for me is Universal Audio Thunderbolt. And you can see it combines the inputs and outputs of these two audio devices. So now we have Soundflower occupying inputs and outputs one and two, and three and four and on are occupied by my interface. So as you can see, my main monitor left and right are now outputs three and four, as opposed to one and two. So we can name this device, something we'll remember. I'm going to name mine Apollo plus Soundflower. There we go. And we can close out of that. Now let's head into OBS. This is free software. You can download it from the internet once again. So make sure you download both Soundflower and OBS before doing this. Um, so here we have our blank template, and we can add audio and video sources here. So we're going to add a new audio input capture. Let's call it Soundflower. And we're going to choose Soundflower 2 channel. Perfect. So there we have it. And you can add any video device you want. We can do a display capture. You see here if I do that, we get this kind of infinity display capture going on. Um, you can also use your FaceTime camera. You can also use your iPhone camera if you have the OBS app, which is $15, but I think it's pretty worth it because the iPhone camera is a lot better than your built-in laptop webcam. So you can just plug your iPhone in, USB to your computer, choose this, and you'll have a working webcam. That's what I've been doing. So that's set up. In order to set up the stream, you go to Settings, Stream, choose your uh, streaming service. They have Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, all sorts of stuff. On that service, you'll get a stream key. You just paste that in there, click OK, and then when you want to stream, click Start Streaming. So that's good to go. Now let's head into our DAW. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it in Logic and Ableton, and then I'm going to show a special technique for Universal Audio users. So if you want to jump to the Ableton portion or the Universal Audio portion, I'll put those timestamps in the description. And right now I'm going to start with Logic. So let's go ahead and open up Logic. And we'll create an empty project and a software track with the default patch, that's fine. And first things first, let's go to Preferences, Audio, and let's make our output device Apollo plus Soundflower, or whatever you named your aggregate device that we just made 
in audio MIDI setup. And we're going to keep the input device our interface, which for me is Universal Audio Thunderbolt. Click Apply Changes. And now, if I play a note on my MIDI keyboard, you can see we're getting signal, but we can't hear it. And that's because the stereo output is automatically going to outputs 1 and 2, which is going to Soundflower. And that's good. We want the signal going to Soundflower, but we also want to hear it. So how we're going to do that is make an aux return track. I'm just going to delete those automatic sends. We're going to go to the next available bus to create a new auxiliary track. And let's name it Monitor. We're going to make the output of this track outputs 3 and 4. Remember the stereo outputs of our interface are outputs 3 and 4. Now if we send this track all the way, option click to bring it to Unity Gain, now we can hear it. Perfect. So now basically we have this monitor track and we have our stereo output going to Soundflower. So our signal is being split into two, one to Soundflower, one to us. That's perfect. We can do the same thing with an audio track. Um, I have an acoustic guitar hooked up to input one on my interface. There you go. Uh, let's do the same thing. Send it to the monitor, option click. And are we getting signal? And if we input monitor, perfect. So now we're pretty much all set up. We got our guitarist, we got our keyboardist, we can play, we can stream with OBS, and we can hear it. So let's go over to OBS to make sure this is working. If I play on my guitar, there it is. We're getting signal. So that'll be streamed to your stream perfectly. So that's pretty much it for the basic logic setup. Let's uh, head over to Ableton now. All right, I opened up Ableton, and here's our default set that it gives us uh, with two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. So let's go into preferences first and configure our audio devices. So we want our input device to be our interface, which for me is Universal Audio Thunderbolt, and we want our output device to be the aggregate device we created in Audio MIDI Setup. So Apollo plus Soundflower. That's looking good. Let's bring this down a little bit. And let's just bring a synth into this first MIDI track. And if I play on my keyboard here, we're getting signal, but we can't hear it. So our master out's going to outputs 1 and 2, which is good. That's going to Soundflower. And that's also the reason we can't hear it. So what we're going to do is create a new return track. We'll name it Monitor. And now our C send is going to send to that return track. So let's bring it all the way up. Let's send this to outputs 3 and 4. Remember, outputs 3 and 4 are our interface's outputs. And now, perfect. That's an ugly sound, so we're going to bring that down a little bit. Cool. And again, same thing for audio tracks. I have my guitar hooked up to input one on my interface. That's good. And if we send this and input monitor, perfect. Let's head over to OBS to make sure that's working good. There's our signal. So that's the basic setup in Ableton. Now, the downside of doing this through a DAW is latency. Um, we can only make our buffer size so low without getting clicks and pops and overloading our CPU. So there's going to be an inevitable amount of latency, which is OK. It's doable, but it's not ideal. Universal Audio has a great solution to this. So if you have a Universal Audio interface, open up console. And as you probably know, Universal Audio offers zero latency monitoring through their system. So we can basically make our whole live mix in console and then just send the output of console to Soundflower through the DAW. Let me unmute this guitar track so you can hear what I'm doing. So the beautiful thing about this is that we can use Universal Audio's amazing 
analog emulation plugins with zero latency and also with zero CPU usage because it runs off their DSP chips in the interfaces. So we can use a Pultec EQ 1176 compressor and I'm sending it to a nice capital chambers reverb. And if you hear now, nice. So now we can make our mix in here and all we need to do to send it to OBS is open up our DAW and create an empty project. We're going to create an audio track. And back in console, go to your settings, go to the input and output matrix, and find which inputs are your monitor left and right. So here we go, 27, 28, monitor left, monitor right. So back in logic, make this audio track a stereo track. Choose inputs 27 and 28. And now anything I do in console is going to be coming through to this track. You can see that, including all my effects processing. So now basically this is just one stereo mix. Instead of having all my tracks here in Logic, I'm making a live mix in console and just sending the stereo out to here. And now this is going to outputs one and two, which is Soundflower. So just turn input monitoring on. And again, we won't hear this because it's being sent to Soundflower. And now go to OBS and it should be receiving the signal. Perfect. So that makes things a lot easier because we don't have to worry about the DAW buffer size. We can keep it nice and high to give our computer room to breathe and have zero latency monitoring through console and do a live mix here and send it all through Soundflower to OBS and the stream. And let me just say one thing before we wrap this up and that's that Doing this is a very intensive process, and it's not a perfect system. Um, using a DAW and audio software at the same time as OBS and live streaming can be very taxing on your computer. So this does not come without some glitches here and there. I've been doing it fairly successfully, but I've also had some crashes and some glitches. And that's just part of the system at this point. Live streaming is not a perfect science at the moment. So um, hopefully it'll get better, but this is a system that I've worked out that seems to work pretty well for me. What would make it even better is using two computers. Then you can just have one computer dedicated to all the music software and the other computer can be streaming and you can just send the output from one system into the other. But I've been doing it this way on one computer and it seems to work fairly well. Um, so just know that this does depend on your CPU's power. So if you have an old, slow computer, you might not have the best results with this. But new MacBooks should be able to handle this pretty well. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope this was helpful for you all. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Like, comment, share this video, and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials like this and posting mixing, recording, and engineering tutorials with Logic and Ableton and lots of other things. So stay tuned, um, stay safe, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, bye guys.